Um, let, um, just to note, this is being recorded. Um, we welcome you to the Federal Fiscal Office Hour for June 2024. We're glad that you could join us today. We want to inform you that we are suspending these office hours for the summer months of July and August with the intention of resuming in September. Uh, the main DOE federal fiscal team will also introduce themselves um, as they as we move through the slides. And we, we will be keeping uh, an eye on the chat. So if you have any questions, you can um, put them there as well. Great. So our agenda for today, we'll be talking about the required written policies for fraud, waste, and abuse, written policies and procedures regarding time and effort, written policies for cash management, invoicing reminders, and then we'll move into the team updates. Um, and then again, please share with us any topics that, that you would like us to address or provide guidance with um, for future meetings. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tyra Corson and I am the ESEA Management Analyst. Um, this slide is to draw your attention to the um, funds that are due to expire shortly and give you an idea of what is remaining um, to be spent down before 93024. Um, I know for the ESEA team, we will be sending out reminders, even if you think that you have invoiced for all your funds, please go into grants for me and double check that. This slide is the performance report timelines, which are overdue at this point for each program, except for adult education who does a quarterly reporting. Um, I am happy to say that ESEA is getting there. I think at this point we have three that are outstanding from 180 something that were due. This is a repeat slide. I think it is worth repeating. It is um, the definition of policy versus procedure. I will tell you that um, the uniform grant guidance often wants you to have written procedures. Um, those procedures are detailed step by step to complete specific tasks or in processes, which generally are related to a policy. One of the policies um, that the feds do monitor is mandatory disclosures. So the non-federal entity, which is all of you, um, must disclose any timely manner in writing to the federal warden agency or pass-through entity all violations of federal criminal law involving fraud, bribery, or gratuity violations potentially affecting the federal award. Non-federal entities that have received a federal award, including the term and conditions outlined in Appendix uh, 12 to this part are required to report in certain civil, criminal, or administrative proceedings to SAM. Fraud, waste, and abuse is a topic that the feds have been uh, monitoring heavily for. Um, therefore, we are um, checking on all of our SAUs that receive federal funds to make sure that they are indeed um, displaying in a public place the hot, hotline contact information of the U.S. Department of Ed Office of the Inspector General to ensure that any individual who observes, detects, or suspects improper use of taxpayer funds can report such improper use. This slide is, shows you what you will see if you go to the main DOE website. This is how we um, post it to our site, uh, informing all uh, 
about how to file a complaint with the Office of the Inspector General. Um, and currently, we are, ESEA is um, reviewing all uh, federal fund receivers of ESEA websites to make sure that the, a posting is there for this purpose. If we find that there is one missing, you will be receiving a letter from us um, indicating that you need to make sure that this is posted. Good morning, this is Colleen O'Neill. I am um, the Assistant Fiscal Coordinator for the Special Services and Inclusive Education team here at the department. And I'm just going to be going over time and effort um, requirements. Um, time and effort is, um, what is it? So it's every, every employee that is charged to a federal grant must maintain time and effort. Um, doesn't matter if it's local entitlement, um, IDEA, title funding, Perkins, um, that their time needs to be documented um, accurately for the time um, that they spend working in that grant. Um, so just a couple of highlights, um, the, the portion of an employee's salary and benefits paid with federal funds should be reflective of the actual activity not reflected what was budgeted. And um, time and effort reporting is required for any part of the individual salary um, that is charged to a federal program or used to match for a federal program. Next slide. Um, so per the federal, federal regulation, time and effort documentation must meet the following criteria in order to be allowable. The employee's time must be documented in writing. The documentation must reflect the actual time spent by the employee, employee on allowable activities in the federal program. The period covered by the documentation must meet compliance also. So personal activity records, um, PARs, time and effort may not exceed one month. Semi-annual certifications or fixed schedules may not exceed six months. Um, the documentation must account for all of the employee's time for the period covered, and the document, documentation must be signed. The PAR and the fixed schedule PAR time and effort must be signed by the employee. The semi-annual time and effort must be signed by the employee or supervisor with firsthand knowledge of the employee's work duties and schedule. So there are um, a few different types of time and effort certifications. There's the semi-annual, the personal activity report, the PAR, a fixed schedule PAR or stipend work fee. So the semi-annual certification is probably um, one that's more widely used. Um, it's used when an employee works 100% of their time on one cost objective. So for example, local entitlement, the employee can be paid from a combination of federal funds or state and local funds, provided that they work 100% of their time on, activi on activities of the federal program being charged. Um, and it can be either signed by the employee or a supervisor with firsthand knowledge of the employee's schedule. We just have one question um, in the chat. It says, does this include long-term subs? Yeah. So. How, um, I guess my question would be how long is the, so is this, this she is just wrote a, specifically, I'm thinking all the people we hired with ESSER. Does somebody from the ESSER team want to answer that? Yes, for ESSER grant, uh, we need a time and effort for all the, all, all employees who is paid by ESSER funds. So including substitutes. So that would, can I ask a clarifying question, Maisha? Sure. So beginning from ESSER 1 all the way up to where we are right now, anybody, any person that we paid any money out of that, we need to have a time and effort for every single one of those persons. Yes. 
even though for our invoice review, we don't ask for that upfront, right. but we always keep saying like you have to maintain it in case uh, of any audit purposes or monitoring. Okay, thank you. So just a quick example of a time and effort certification for a semi-annual. Um, you want to make sure that the employee's name, job title, the school, and um, ideally the CDFA, CFDA number would be included on that. Um, identify the district and the type of documentation that it is. Um, and then just the affirmation statement and the dates of the certification. Um, one important thing to note, um, this particular affirmation statement goes from January to June. And it must be signed and dated after that ending date. So this certification would be invalid if it was signed June 29th. It needs to be signed after the end date um, and signed by the employee or the supervisor with firsthand knowledge. This is um, another time and effort certification, um, just showing the uh, uh, a group of people working on the same objective. So you would have the employees' names listed, their titles, um, still identifying the district and the type of time and effort it is, um, the affirmation statement for all with the dates, and it's signed and dated after the end date. So if you're um, doing it for a group of people. A uh, personal activity report or a PAR is to, um, to be used for employees working on multiple cost objectives. Um, it must be based after the fact determination of employees' actual activities, so it can't be estimated in advance. All of the employees' compensated time must be accounted for in the report and must be prepared at least monthly and coincide with one or more pay periods. Um, the report must be signed by the employee. And this is just a sample of the activity report. So again, identifying the school, the type of um, time and effort certification that it is with the employee's name, the pay period in which the employee is being paid and their job title. And then a, um, a, a listing of the different funding sources and the amount of time that that employee spent in each of those, each of those um, activities. Um, with a description, um, total of the hours and the percentage, and then signed and dated by the employee after the period of, um, after the pay period. So this is a sample of a fixed schedule time and effort certification. So it is just um, a kind of this following the same suit, whoops. Did we lose our slide? Yep. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Uh, no I don't know why. Had a mind of its own. <laughs> so, oh, did I go too fast? I did. Yeah, I think we're just too back, actually. Right here. So okay. um, this is just a um, sample of a, a fixed schedule time and effort certification. Again, making sure that we document the employee, their position, um, the CFDA number and the certification period, which in this case is six months um, for the time a period of six months, a weekly type of schedule. And it shows the distribution of time um, and the amounts of the percentages of the time that the employee spent working 
in different um, cost objectives and it is signed and dated at, um, within that six month period. And then the next slide is just a sample of that employee's fixed schedule. Um, so we can look at it and say, in fact, um, this employee is working these these days, these hours in those cost objectives. The last type of time and effort is a teacher stipend worksheet and it must be completed or signed by um, the conference or training supervisor um, that the teacher, where the teacher is attending the conference or doing the training. Um, the information provided is a requirement mandated by the federal government and additional information can be found at the um, at the website below and you will get a copy of these slides. So if you want to have more information on that, you can click on that link and get more information. And again, so this is just a documented uh, documentation showing the teacher stipend worksheet. Um, it gives the conference or the training title and date, who attended the, whoops, uh, the, the stipend that is, looks like those letters got cut out, the stipend that was provided, and then it is signed and dated by the um, conference or training supervisor. All right, before we uh, move into cash management, I just want to know that that stipend time and effort um, worksheet can also be submitted for leadership team meetings that are being charged to a federal grant. Oftentimes um, I receive uh, um, the timesheet of the employee, which is fine, but this is just a um, comprehensive way of capturing all who attended and um, the date of the, the meeting, how long it was for and what they were paid. Um, so now moving into cash management, which is known in the uniform grant guidance as financial management. I have here just some highlights of 200.302. We do monitor for um, the identity of all uh, accounts for the uh, federal awards and the main DOE school finance uh, accounting handbook. Uh, offers you fund codes, revenue codes, object codes, and function codes that should be used on your in your accounting systems so that we can identify which federal grant you are actually posting your expenses to. Um, the regulation also states that accurate, current, and complete disclosures of the financial results of each federal award or program in accordance with the reporting requirements set forth in uh, 200.328 and 200.329. So this is um, for ESCA. I know we require uh, performance reports. And this is just stating that you do realize that you need to keep accurate and current records. Um, written procedures to implement the requirements. So this is, uh, you should have written procedures on how to um, submit a invoice for reimbursement uh, or even uh, procurement procedures for um, contracts, we also monitor for that. Um, written procedures for determining the allowability of costs in accordance, that is part of the procurement uh, procedures. So we do monitor for um, both of those and they should be written. This is uh, 200.302, the financial management. Um, this is from Edgar or Uniform Grant Guidance. And again, it's just uh, a more detailed record than what I just highlighted. Um, comparison of expenditures with budgets amounts for each federal award, that's important. 
especially if you are using um, grants for me, I know that we have some issues with um, things being requested, but not budgeted. They, they must be both. They must be budgeted in the application before you will be able to request them on the invoicing side. Financial management, the key here is we don't want you to have cash on hand. So the state of Maine operates on a reimbursement model. You can go to the next slide, please. Which 200.305 gives us that um, ability to operate on a reimbursement model. And this is for all expenses, they must be obligated, the work must be completed, or um, the services received and paid out by the SAU before um, you can request reimbursement. Okay, so I'm Maisha Asha. I am the fiscal coordinator for Federal Emergency Grant. So in this slide, we would like to uh, give you an idea about the invoice time frame and uh, all across different grants. Um, so for IDEA and ESEA, the invoices must be submitted at least quarterly. Subrecipient who ever ex whose award exceeds two hundred and fifty thousand dollar must submit reimbursement request monthly basis throughout the period of performance of the grant. For CTE beginning uh, of the next fiscal year, which is FY25, um, invoices must be submitted quarterly at minimum. And for ESER grants, invoices must be submitted at least quarterly, or it can be submitted monthly or bi-monthly basis as well. So, and as far as 10% rule goes, uh, for IDEA, ESEA, and CTE, all grants are managed under, by grants for any system. And where you will see um, in um, that expenses, you can, uh, cannot be requested under any category or object code that has not been budgeted in the application. And grants for ME uh, will allow is request to exceed 10% of the amount budgeted for a specific object code or $500, whichever is greater, if the request does not exceed the total award amount of the grant. And for ESER grants, uh, ESER grant is managed under a uh, GEM system and um, expenses for any ESER grants uh, cannot be submitted for any budget category if it is not uh, budgeted in the application. And invoice can overexpand in multiple categories if the overage is offset in another category or collectively does not exceed 10% of the SAU allocation. And of course, the request cannot be exceed the total allocation amount. So, ARP ESA 3 is a little bit different than the other ESA grants uh, as far as the 10% rule goes. So AR, for ARP ESA 3, the 10% over, uh, overage rule is applied on project budget, not the total allocation. So you can uh, overexpand in a project budget category if the overage does not exceed 10% of the project budget. And project budget cannot be a negative number at any point. Maisha, we also have, there's another question in the chat uh, regarding the timesheet signed by employees that are labeled ESER 3. Do we need to separate time and effort? That just came in. Okay, let me see. Just so you know. Yeah, as, yeah, as, yeah as, I think I um, responded like, we do not require you to submit time and effort sheet with any reimbursement request. However, we also want, I mean, uh, we all always, um, you know, keep um, reminding the our fields that uh, the time and effort has to be maintained for all um, employees who are 
paid using ESAR funds. So yeah, it has to be maintained uh, by the SAUs. It's, uh, it, it is requirement, but we do not require to submit this time and effort with all of your e reimbursement request while you are invoicing. I, Maisha, I think Dawn's question is, can she use an employee's timesheet for time and effort documentation? And I just want you to know that uh, as another federal program, we do allow that. Yes, yes. Okay, so we have some exciting news. Uh, the main DOE is excited to share the Brewman Group will be joining us in October for a one and a half day of professional learning, which if you're not familiar with the Brewman Group, they are uh, attorneys out of Washington, D.C. that specialize in uniform grant guidance for education. Uh, they offer an unbelievable training. It's invaluable. And I suggest everybody save the date. Um, it's going to be, you know, a first come first serve basis. I believe we have, we can accommodate up to 200 people for the one and a half day um, training. And registration will be required. So this is strongly recommended for business manager attendance and would be beneficial for fe federal program managers as well. Here's some ESEA um, updates. We are excited to welcome Shelly Chassie Jondro to the team Effective Monday. Um, our ESEA office hours will be held on July 9th. And the FY25 ESEA application due date is August 1st, 24. Make sure that you get your application in by August 1st if you are requesting pre-award costs. And as a reminder, do not obligate any FY25 ESEA funds at this time. You must wait for substantial approval. Uh, the upcoming deadlines for the FY22 ESEA funding is 9-30-24. I will be sending out notices for all districts that have $1,000 or more to expense. The FY23 expire on 9-30-24. Please get in there and invoice for those funds as soon as possible. And this is just a reminder that don't forget the posting that is required for fraud, waste and abuse that is currently being reviewed for compliance. As some um, object to uh, reiterate that these are the some of the grants uh, that are uh, you know ending on uh, September 30th, 2024, which includes Teach Me, Educator uh, Workforce, Evidence-Based Literacy Grant, ARP ESER Funding, and ARP uh, Homeless Children and Youth Grant. And uh, uh, all these funds needs to be obligated by September 30th, 2024, and invoiced by December 30th, 2024. And we say preferably March sooner because December 30th is the date when DOE needs to approve those invoices. So please allow us some time to review and uh, make any correction if needed. Thank you. We can move on to the next slide. Um, before I go on to the next slide, we do have one more question. It says we have issues with. Um, oh, someone already took care of that. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, I'm Jody Truman, uh, child nutrition financial specialist. Uh, just want a couple uh, notices. In the summer, in August, we have a boot camp. Um, so if you have, if your district has any new food service directors, if you could please let us know so we can invite them um, to that meeting. Um, and it is in Augusta at our office. Um, and then our, just as an upcoming reminder, the 2024 annual financial report is due by September 1st. Um, the report is submitted in CNP web by the child nutrition filer. Business managers are encouraged to work with the um, child nutrition um, manager 
uh, but it must be completed, uh, but it must be completed. There has to be a division of duties. Um, so it must be completed by the child nutrition employee. Um, but for accuracy, we want the business manager involved if at all possible. And then if you have any questions, you can contact me um, in regards to that. So just a quick IDA update, the um, FY25 um, allocations and applications have been loaded and are open to complete for substantial approval. Um, in order to um, start receiving your funding as of July 1st, those applications need to be submitted to us prior to June 30th, which means once you have started the application and um, completed your draft, it then goes to approval of your for your business manager to approve and then your superintendent to approve. It doesn't come to us for approval until those other approvals are completed. Um, so just want to remind um, districts that we don't receive them until the, the final approval by your superintendent happens. Um, there are a few inputs that um, need to be done to be considered for substantial approval. Um, maintenance of effort section. Um, and I realize that the grid is empty um, for the previous year's MOE information, and that will be loaded soon. Um, but the, uh, the, there are two inputs that districts need to put in, and that is the MOE, um, the budgeted amount that you had set forth to your taxpayers, usually in Article 2, plus any budgeted special education transportation. Those two amounts added together go in the first box with an anticipated student count in the second box. Um, and that will be, um, once you have put those two inputs in, that's all you need to do for MOE currently. Um, the proportionate share for parentally placed students. Um, in this section, make sure that you are choosing from the dropdown if you consult with any private schools in your encatchment area. Um, you make sure that you would change the status to participating or not participating. Um, you also need to enter your student count. And this number should match the same number that you entered in your MOE box. Um, the other number input that you would put in would be the number of any parentally placed students that you have for the coming year, if you know of any. Once you have put that number in there, if it's zero, your, your, your section is complete. If you're one, the system will do a calculation for the amount of money that you need to set aside and budget for that parentally placed student. So you need to remember um, to start a project, a parentally placed projects for that, that amount that is required. Um, and then when you're completing your budgets and projects, just make sure you enter a complete purpose description and the projected outcome of those projects in the text box with the correct coding. Um, once those sections are complete, then you would um, complete the draft and then it goes through the level of, levels of approval. Um, again, I just wanna reiterate that it doesn't come to the DOE until it, the final approval from your superintendent happens. Um, and I, I know that sometimes um, people are out of office, out of the office or on conferences um, if you're finding that it's hung up in your um, in your district and you need help, please let me know so we can make sure that we get those in. Um, the substantial approval date does not become effective until we approve it. So just because you, you've completed it um, and you want funding for July 1st, if it doesn't go through those other levels of approval, um, that funding will not happen until it is approved. There are a couple of questions in regards to what you just talked about in the chat. I don't know if you want to address them here or or um, type them. I will type so they'll have answers if you want to move on. Awesome, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Megan Dichter, Director of Adult Education. Um, we have our two federal, the AFLA and the IELCE grants for FY25 and FY26 have been awarded and contracts will have a start date of July 1st. 
We will be moving uh, to Grants for Me as the grant management system for that. And it wasn't on the prior slide, but that will also be quarterly invoicing for those funds. Um, and the final invoices for the previous year, the FY24 grant is due July 15th. And there will be no carryover of those funds since that is the end of that AFLA cycle. And those are my updates. Thanks. So some uh, our colleagues from CTE team uh, has some conflicting schedule today, but they want to share these updates with the field. Um, and if you have any question at any point, you can put it here and we will convey that to our colleague. So if I uh, 25 Parkins applications are open and please submit them by June 30th for the CTE team to review and approve. When application for the CTE industry standard grant will open, uh, it has not been determined yet, but we are working on the formula and do it little Phil will provide updates in the coming weeks. Final expenditure report for FY23 Parkins and uh, the state grant are overdue. Please, sub please complete at those as soon as possible. And all Parkins FY24 budget revisions are due by June 30th. Funds are required to be obligated. You must, uh, you may spend down funds between July 1 to September 30th, 2024. So those are some um, updates that our colleague wanted to share. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to say a few words from the Office of School and Student Supports. Uh, we wanted to make sure everybody's aware that we have four grants currently uh, under uh, administration by the following people. Stronger Connections, that would be me. If you have any questions, concerns about any of these grants, these are the people you will reach out to. Uh, for ease, it would be Bethany Company Cunningham. For the McKinney Kinta Bento, uh, it'd be uh, Sydney Lynch. And then for Community Schools, me and Hannah, uh, and we just wanted to make note that the first three are managed in grants for me, and the last one is still using hard copy invoice system. Uh, those will be sent through Katie Keenan. General questions for your Office of School and Student Support should be directed to Julie Smy, and I believe now we're going to move on to open questions for everyone. Any questions? All right, so uh, team office hours, Federal Emergent Relief Fund programs, relief programs, uh, their office hours are the first Thursday of the month at 9 a.m. The ESEA federal programs are the second Tuesday of the month at 9 a.m. The Perkins VCT is every Tuesday from 3 to 4 p.m. via Zoom. And the contacts for the team are listed here if you have questions that come to you after this presentation. I actually uh, have a question before you leave completely. Go, go ahead, you can ask your question. Okay. Uh, it goes back to S3 invoicing. And um, I was told that there couldn't be zero overages in all of the projects. So I just want some clarification because then uh, you today you said there's a 10%, but the overall project budget could not be overspent. Yes. So exactly uh, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, for projects, you can adjust the amount in between cat project category but you cannot overspend the project budget. The project budget has to be remain same. Okay, for instance, just to make sure I'm clear. So say we've got extended school day, salaries and benefits. Um, I cannot overexpend. If I have 22,000 left, I can only spend 22,000 in salaries and benefits, or can I overspend that as long as the total amount in extended school day does not exceed the budget? Yes, you can overspend the salary and benefit, but you cannot exceed the project budget. Okay, so I've got salaries, purchase services, supplies, equipment. 
yes. totaling a hundred thousand. I have to keep it under a hundred thousand, but I could overspend my twenty two in salaries. By yes, 10%. by ten okay. percent. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's that's different information than I've been told before. I was it was getting I had invoices that were returned for that specific reason because I say I'd overspent salaries and benefits a little bit and I had them returned to me. So so okay. I mean I'm uh I, maybe I I need to know more inform detailed information about those. But yeah, I mean you have my uh contact at uh, contact number, right? If you know yeah. what exactly happened just email me and i will uh, uh see what happened okay well it's yeah. fine that we revised the budget um to take care of it so it's they've now been approved but going forward we're down to the end of the wire now and i want just don't want to delay times if mm -hmm. i can spend something a little bit i'm going to do that for the sake of time so i just want some clarification but thank you very much that helps a lot actually thank you There's several questions in the um, chat. One is, where are these office hours posted? They are posted on the DOE website. I am trying to find that um, <laughs> right now, and I will drop it in the chat once I do. Also, the train, the registration for the October training, the Brew Man, has not been opened up yet. As soon as we do open that up for registration, you will be notified. Yeah, and I believe it's going on the business manager list. One of the locations is the business manager listserv. It'll be posted there as well. Um, I think that, um, I think that's it. So the federal fiscal office hours, I'm gonna put the link in chat right now. Tyra, I have one more question. Yeah. Uh, when does Title I reallocated invoicing need to be completed? For their, for this summer? Yeah. 9 2024. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any additional questions? All right, I wanna thank you all for coming and just remember we will be uh, resuming in September. So July and August, we will not be meeting um, and we'll send out um, that information when it gets closer to September. Thank you very much.